Or tap water is not as safe as bottled water. I don't like the taste of tap water as much as bottled water. I can recycle a plastic water bottle, so it's just as sustainable as tap water. I heard the city of Dane doesn't test their water as much as bottled water. There are a lot of misconceptions about tap water that are costly to both the environment and your wallet. Through this video, we're going to break down the stereotypes about our water and give you the true facts about what is coming out of your faucet. So where does our water come from? And what process does it go through before it comes out the faucet? Our water comes from a buried aquifer that is connected to our rivers. The Great Miami Buried Valley Aquifer holds over 1 trillion gallons of water and is the sole source of drinking water in the Dayton region. When it rains, water seeps into the aquifer through sand, gravel, and clay. This process makes the water extremely clean and removes almost all toxins. Here is a well they use to pump water out of the aquifer. It then goes directly to the water plant where it is run through a series of filters. Throughout each step of the cleaning process, the water is tested to ensure that it is clean. It is then pumped throughout the city and into our homes. The pipes are being monitored constantly for bacteria, lead, and other harmful contaminants. The city ensures that the water never falls below harmful levels. Fluoride and chlorine are then added to ensure that the water is clean and good for our teeth. Most bottled water, such as Nestle or Aquafina, is actually just another city's tap water. There are pumping stations for these companies in places like Ohio, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Minnesota. So while the bottle may say pristine mountain water, this is rarely the case. In addition, tap water is regulated by the US EPA and has strict regulations to ensure your tap water is clean. Bottled water is regulated by the FDA or Food and Drug Administration. The FDA does not mandate as harsh of water quality tests and also does not release water quality records. That means that when tap water is tested, the test results are released to the public, whereas bottled water companies do not have to disclose where the water came from, the treatment process, or what contaminants are inside your water. That doesn't mean bottled water is not safe. It just means that tap water needs to go through more rigorous testing than bottled water. In addition, a recent study by the World Health Organization found that 90% of bottled water had microplastics in it. These are harmful to the environment, though they may not be harmful to humans. So why don't more people drink tap water? For one, there are a lot of misconceptions about taste. Did you know that in a blind taste test, people actually prefer tap water over bottled water? This test has actually been conducted throughout all the United States, including on Good Morning America, City Cleveland, and even on YouTube Standards. The results are clear. People actually prefer tap water over bottled water. Not only is taste a perk, but bottled water is actually 300 times more expensive than tap water. Easy on your wallet. That's amazing. While sewer water is sent to treatment facilities, storm water is sent directly to the river. This half ball right here takes all the storm water from drains on UD's campus and brings it directly to the river right here. If there is trash, oil, or salt on the road, it will be flushed into the stormwater system along with any chemicals that are put on lawns in excess. It's also important to pick up animal waste from your pets because animal waste can have E. coli that can be dangerous to our water ecosystems. It is vital that you never dump anything down the stormwater drain and avoid littering. It's also important that if you see trash, pick it up and dispose of it properly. One of the best parts of living in the Dane area is having access to all of its rivers enjoy nature by paddling down our rivers and surfing on the whitewater features at Eastwood and Riverscape Metro Parks. There are tons of parks to make use of. For more information about the park you can travel to, visit the Five Rivers Metro Parks website. In addition, we have great partners working to protect and educate for our rivers. The Rivers Institute at the University of Dayton works to educate the regional community about water conservation and protection. The Miami Conservancy District also works to protect our rivers. MCD was created after the Great Dayton Flood. It works across county and city lines to promote safe drinking water and healthy rivers. We are lucky to live in a community that cares so much about the wellness of our rivers. We need your help to continue protecting them. While we may have a lot of water in our aquifer, it is costly and energy intensive to clean and pump our water. 
furthermore, there are plenty of areas throughout the U.S. and the world that struggle to get their water. So it's vitally important that we work to conserve our water resources. Now let's go to Charlotte and Mitch to learn about conserving our water resources. While we're lucky enough to live in a city with plenty of water, we still must work together to help reduce our water usage and keep it clean. The more water we send down the drain, the more energy we must use to purify it at a water treatment plant. At UD, we utilize rain gardens, which helps decrease rain runoff and maintains our water quality. And by installing low flow toilets and shower heads, UD is working to conserve water. But we still need your help, and so here's a few easy tips you can use to reduce your water usage. When you're in the bathroom, be sure to throw your tissues in the trash rather than flushing them down the toilet to conserve water. When washing your hands, turn the water off while you lather. And turn off the water while you're brushing your teeth. This saves up to four gallons of water a minute. By taking a shower that's one to two minutes shorter, you can save up to 150 gallons of water per month. For another way to save water, turn off the faucet while washing your hair. To save water and money, you should regularly check for leaky pipes, toilets, and faucets and get them repaired right away. One drip every second can quickly add up to five gallons a day. As we mentioned in the energy usage video, only wash full loads of laundry. Additionally, be sure to only wash your clothes in cold water. This helps your darker clothes retain their colors better. When you're in the kitchen, be sure to wash your fruits and vegetables in a pan of water rather than running the tap. You can then use that pan of water to water your garden or plants around the house. And rather than defrosting your frozen food in hot water, be sure to put it in the fridge. If you're boiling water, use as little as possible. Not only will this save energy and water, but it will allow your water to boil quicker. You can reduce the number of dirty glasses you create by designating one cup as your drinking glass for the day. And when you're washing dishes by hand, plug your sink and use the water within it instead of continuously running the water down the drain. Letting your pots and pans soak in the sink instead of running the water as you scrape will give your muscles a break and help conserve water. If you have a dishwasher, you can save water by scraping your dishes instead of rinsing them before you put them in the dishwasher. And make sure that the dishwasher is completely full before you run it. We hope this video helped you learn about outdoor recreation in Dayton and why it's important to help conserve and protect our water. Next time you're in the kitchen, laundry room, or bathroom, remember this video and these simple conservation tips. While our actions may seem too small to see the effects on the world, each one of us has a huge impact here at UD. So let's work together and make UD a more sustainable university.